Welcome to the finite element modeling lab within the BioMEMS course. During this lab, we will import a microfluidic CAD design into a simulation software and simulate laminar flow in our design flow path. The following topics will be covered. Use of finite element method simulation software, COMSOL Multiphysics, importing a CAD model that represents a physical microfluidic prototype into COMSOL, use of computational fluid dynamics to simulate laminar flow and monitor liquid concentrations in the simulation. And lastly, plotting the results in console. We will be using a CAD software, Autodesk Inventor Professional, to create our drawing exchange format or DXF files, which the console multiphysics accepts. With the Autodesk Inventor ready, let us open our CAD file Go to Open, choose your CAD file, and open. In this lab, we will simulate without the micropillar extrusions inside the channel. Therefore, we need to remove the extrusion. Locate your micropillar extrusion feature on the model ribbon. Hovering over the different features highlights the feature on the 3D view. Select the right feature. Right click and choose Suppress Feature. Let's go over to the H channel. Make sure the channel is highlighted and shown. Right click and select Export Face As. Choose an appropriate name. Make sure the save type is chosen as DXF file and save. Now we have a 2D sketch of our channels exported. Moving over to console. On the opening view, choose Model Wizard, then 2D. Next we will choose our physics. Use the search bar to locate terminal flow. Choose the single phase flow and that. We will also add a second physics. Using the transport of diluted species enables us to simulate different chemical concentrations and continue over to study. For our exercise, let's choose stationary and done. Here we have the basic layout of the simulation area. On the left side ribbon we have the model builder, which gives us access to parameters, geometry, physics, mesh, studies or simulation time base and results. In the middle section you have the detailed settings window. Its content will change depending on which option you select under the model builder. On the right side, we have the drawing, simulation and craft results area. Below it, we have the action messages, progress, log and table. In the top, we have a toolbar with better access to options from the model builder ribbon. Going back to the task. Before we import, we need to be aware that the drawing file does not come with specified units but in absolute units. This means that depending on the console geometric phase units, the model will also take the scale. As we have the geometry already open, let's change the length unit into millimeters. In the model builder under component one, right click on geometry and select import. For the source, select the DXF file and browse. Choose your DXF file and open. Without worrying about the other settings, click import and you will see a model appear in the graphics. Since the XY axis in our CAD program have been flipped, we have a vertical import. However, we can rotate it. On the top toolbar, go to geometry and under transforms, select rotate. For the input, 
select the model and for the rotation angle set 90 degrees since we won't have any more geometric edits go to form union and build all this will lock the geometry to define our flow rate and chemical concentration on model build ribbon under global definitions click on parameter 1 and here we will add our global variables double click to add for the flow rate let's name it v in press tab to move to the next box for the flow rate let us add 3 milliliters per minute it is important to specify all units to avoid conversion errors in console Next, let us add a concentration variable C in. And for the expression, let's add 3 moles per liter. With this done, let's move to define our known regions. We know we want to have outlets and inlets. We also know that the outlets will be equivalent, meaning we don't need to specify them separately. In the model builder ribbon, under component 1, right click on definitions, go to selections and add explicit. Here we will define our boundaries for the outlet, rename it to outlets. For the input entities, change the geometric entity level to boundary as we have a 2D model. Moving over to the graphics, we have to zoom in to our outlets. To zoom using the mouse, you can hold down the scroll wheel. Move it up and down. To pan the view, hold down the right click while moving. But perhaps for this example, the zoom box and zoom extends buttons are easier to use. And let us zoom in to the outlets. And select the boundaries. We know that in order to see the mixing effect, the two inlets will have to be uniquely defined. Right click on the selections and add another explicit. Rename this one to inlet one top. Again, change the geometric entity level to boundary. And zoom in and select the boundaries. Repeat this process for the second inlet. Don't forget to change the geometric entity level. Zoom in and select. With this, we have our boundaries defined, making it a bit easier while configuring physics. Next, let us move to physics of laminar flow. Click on the physics to open its general settings. In the domain selection, we need to make sure that only domains are selected where flow is expected. Firstly, clear selection and select the main channel. Looking back at the settings, in many simulation physics, you can specify general ambient rules, such as ambient temperature and ambient pressure, which for our case, we can leave as is atmospheric pressure and 293.15 Kelvin or 20 degrees Celsius. For our microfluidic simulations, it is important to have compressibility set to incompressible. Next, we want to create the flow in our model and this is one of the physics to do it with. In the model builder ribbon, I click on laminar flow and add inlet. To select our boundaries that would represent this inlet, in the boundary selection, choose inlet top. 
After this, we specify the conditions at these inlet boundaries. Choose fully developed flow. And instead of average velocity, select flow rate. And for the flow rate, set the global variable V in. Because we have another inlet, let us add a second. Likewise, select the boundary to be the inlet bottom. Change the boundary condition to fully develop flow. And set the flow rate equal to the first. Next, we define the outlets. Right click on laminar flow and select outlet. And since our outlets will be the same, it is okay to pick them both. And because we don't want to impose any flow rate or velocity expectations on the outlets, we leave the boundary conditions to pressure and the pressure value to zero. And with this, our laminar flow is set. Before we continue with the physics of transport of diluted species, we need to define our materials. And for that, on the top toolbar, open materials, and click add material. Next to the graphics window, a new material selection opens. And type in water. For now, let us choose the built-in option. And you can close the add material window. If we look into the settings of the material, we can see all the parameters that it comes with in Comsol. In some materials, even the built-in option has some gaps, depending on the physics you've chosen to simulate them in. But no worries, all necessary missing parameters will be shown here and are left for you to look up or calculate. In the geometric entity selection, as with the used physics, make sure the domain selection covers only the necessary parts. Firstly, clear the selection and choose the main channel. For this simulation, we will only use water to view the mixing effect of its different molecular concentrations. Next, let us move to the physics of transport of diluted species. Select the physics and verify the domains. Again, clear the selection and select only the areas needed. Before we move to adding inlets and outlets, under the diluted species physics, open the transport properties. Since our expected mixing process is based on diffusion, we need to specify the diffusion settings. Here we have our source as material, and as the material we have to choose water. Water self-diffusion coefficient is heavily temperature dependent and can be looked up from scientific articles or even online. At 20 degrees Celsius the coefficient is roughly 2.02 times 10 to the power of minus 9 square meters per second. Now we can proceed with inflows and outflows. Right click on the physics and add an inflow. Set the boundary selection to inlet top and for the concentration set it to our global variable C in. Add a second inlet Choose the appropriate boundary and for the concentration it has to be something different than the first inlet. It can be left zero but to avoid possible computational errors with zero let us set it to one. Notice the unit is in cubic meters which leaves this concentration still relatively close to zero in comparison to our C in Lastly, for diluted species, add an outflow. Right click and choose outflow. There are no other settings here available other than choosing the boundaries. Last physics left to configure is the multi physics option, which creates an interaction with our two different physics. Under the model builder ribbon, 
right click on the multiphysics and add direction flow diluted species in the settings window it can be seen that our flow is defined by laminar flow and our species transport is defined by our transport of diluted species as finite element method is defined our model needs to be split into pieces to replicate something that we have in nature such as atoms however since atomic scale simulations are computationally too expensive we will define a cutting mesh that is more reasonable select mesh 1 in the model builder ribbon make sure that the domain selected on the model is only the region we simulate flows in in the mesh settings the sequence type allows us to choose between a smart mesh generation which depends on our used physics modules or configure it entirely on our own for now let's leave it automatic in the automated option we can still change the element size this will specify the granularity of the mesh a more finer size elements can help to bring the simulation closer to reality but will be much slower to compute alternatively the coarser the larger the elements the faster the simulation but further from realistic simulations let us stick with normal and build all the last part before we can simulate let us configure the study in the model builder ribbon click on step one here in the settings we can see which physics we run in the simulation we have all our physics selected press compute to begin the simulation the progress can be observed in the progress window Once the simulation is done, COMSOL generates us different graphs of relevant parameters. Here we have the velocity graph. We can see how with our symmetric design the flow rates are also both symmetric at the inlets and outlets. Here we can notice how faster flow rates concentrate in the middle of this design. Next we have the pressure view in Pascal's. Here we can see the colored lines with specific pressure values. And lastly we have the concentration graph here we can clearly see how the mixing occurs we have our higher 3 moles per liter concentration at the top and lower 0 0.001 moles per liter at the bottom inlet at the outlets we can see that the mixing has not been very equal this can be increased by lowering the flow rate giving more time for molecular diffusion however if flow rate is critical, a longer mixing area would be needed. And if the microfluidic chip size is limited, adding flow diverting obstacles inside the mixing area can also increase the mixing rate. Besides the default graphs, we can look for more detailed information from the simulations by using probes. In the model builder ribbon under component 1, right click on definitions, go to probes and add a boundary probe by default we have all our boundaries selected clear the selection and let us select one of the outlets zoom in and select as we want to measure the average concentration at the outlet change the expression to C the expression C or the concentration variable is taken from the transport of diluted species physics. You can click on the physics, expand the dependent variables and locate the variables available. Coming back to the probe, let us also change the unit volume to liters instead of cubic meters. To identify the probe, we already have a default description of concentration, but let us label it as outlet top. Let us repeat the process for the bottom outlet. I click on definitions, go to probes and add a laundry probe. 
clear the boundaries. Change the expression. And the unit. With the probe set, we can read on the simulation. After the simulation is done, in the probe table, you can see the concentration values of both outlets. This view enables quick verification if the change flow rate or other micropillars will bring us any closer to balanced outlet concentrations. In conclusion, we went through how to extract a DXF file of a microphysics chip's CAD design and how to import it into Comsol. We walked through the layout of Comsol and components and physics. We went through configuring variables, probes and many other simulation parameters to simulate the laminar flow and the self-diffusion between specified concentrations. And we went through how and what can be extracted from the results. For reporting, try to run the simulation with the micropillars left in the extracted CAD drawing file. Keep in mind to select only domains where liquid is flowing. On the right for reference, you should expect something like this for the velocity graphs. Compare the concentration values at outlets with and without micropillars and discuss the change in mixing results. For questions, you are welcome to contact me through email. This is it for the first lab of finite element modeling. Mm -hmm.